about to be eliminated completely. There's been a couple different options over the last couple of years that have been pitched to the NFL and, you know, the NFL didn't like it or maybe all the special teams coordinators didn't get on board. So there was a little bit of fighting amongst the coordinators and special teams ranks. Can he get 24 hours to pass this? Yes. But how do the coordinators feel about it? They hate everything. The coordinators seemingly have come together with an idea that they all enjoy, an idea that will save kickoff, that will save special teamers' jobs, that will save the strategy of kickoff returns in the game, while also still having an opportunity for a team to recover an onside kick so that if they're in the game in the fourth quarter, they can still get back like they've always been able to do. There's a rule proposal called the NFL hybrid kickoff that they're pitching this weekend that could potentially save the kickoff play. The leader of the special teams coordinators that have kind of architected this particular kickoff off of the XFL kickoff. Ladies and gentlemen from the New Orleans Saints, Coach Darren Rich. Yeah. So let's go to the, the rule that you guys are going to be pitching or the kickoff that you're going to be pitching. Here's the graphic that we made. The NFL also released their own graphic today, I think just moments ago, because they heard that we were going to be talking about this <laughs> yeah. on the show, Coach. So basically, if we can go through this, and correct me if I'm ever wrong, kickers will still be kicking off from the 35. The rest of the kickoff team will be lined up at the plus 40. That's the other team's 40. Have to have two players outside the numbers on each side, two players in the alleys or the lanes, which is in between the numbers and the hash marks on each side, and then one player on each hash mark. That is 11 on the kickoff team, and that is correct? That is correct, yes. And then on the flip side at the 35, uh, because in between the 40 and the 35 will be a neutral zone, we will talk about that in a moment. No headshots in there. Okay. No takeouts, no spears, no right. nothing. That's a neutral zone in between the 40 and the 35. In between the 35 and the 30, there has to be nine players. Seven of them have to have their line or their foot on the 35-yard line. Two of them are allowed to be behind, but they cannot move until the ball touches something after the ball is kicked, correct? That's correct. You're good so far. Yep. And then from the goal line to the 20 will be the landing zone where you're allowed to have two returners and those returners are allowed to move, right? I believe before the ball is kicked or touches anything. That's correct. They can go anywhere in that landing zone, move around any formation. They could stack. They could be together. They could be apart. Doesn't matter. Yep. Okay. So you got 10 coverage guys and nine blocking people within 10 yards of each other. So that eliminates the big time run up. Mm -hmm. shots with each other that eliminates any potential blind sides running from the other side of the field because you're all kind of linked together this is pseudo a punt when the ball is already in the middle of the air or a kickoff whenever everybody is already gathered after the full speed 45 yard run up with the other side trying to eliminate massive collisions trying to eliminate hamstring pulls and head injuries right that is why we're doing this setup here coach yeah, I would I would agree with that the injury rate right now as, as we believe this and running all the all the you know all the tests on it, everything, we feel the injury rate will be way down and, and, and come down closer to what a normal offensive defensive scrimmage play would look like. Yes. Okay, so let's go to the kicking now. The ball has to land in the landing zone, and nobody on the field will move other than the returners and the kicker until the ball touches something, whether that's a returner catching it or the ball hitting the ground in the landing zone. Then the play will officially start for the 10 and 9 people that are blocking around the neutral zone. If the ball is kicked into the end zone as a touchback on the fly, the return team will get the ball at the 35. If you kick it and it doesn't make it to the landing zone or you kick it out of bounds, returning team gets the ball at the 40. That's one first down away with some kickers from points. So it's a massive penalty. So what is being encouraged here is kick the ball into the landing zone. As soon as the returner gets it, probably want to land that within the five. Okay, you probably want to kick that, land that within the five, because if you land it at the 19, returner gets a full running start on that before anybody has moved. And then, boom, we just have standard kickoff rules. No double, double teams, no wedges, no blind sides. Right, Coach? Well, the guys in the setup zone, Pat, they can they can be a part of a double team. The only guy that can't be a part of a double team is the, is the guy in the back, the off returner, that doesn't get the ball. He can't come clean anybody up. He can't be part of any double teams, but the guys in the setup zone, those nine players, 
they can, just like currently, they can be part of the double team. Okay, going to have to be quick to set that up. I mean, that is going to be difficult with everybody being right on top of you already. This is a take off the XFL. I believe there's a couple things that are different. Speaking of different, onside kick rules. Well, yeah. those only can happen in the fourth quarter uh, for the team that is down, and they have to deem that they're doing an onside kick in which the setup will go back to what it currently is, and you have to kick an onside kick in that particular rep. Only in the fourth quarter, losing team beforehand, have to say we're doing an onside kick proper is that right that's correct and then the ball is going to have to be touched in that setup zone area so basically the kickoff team be the same exact rules as it is now but you can't what you couldn't do is you couldn't declare an onside kick and then kick the ball deep that'll be that'll be an unsportsmanlike so that ball's got to be touched in that 25 yard area which which is where, where all the onside kicks are touched right now anyway so really no change no big difference to that part okay okay because i had that question because I have a couple onside kicks that I have kicked. Like, here's one against Tennessee Titans where I, I hit it a little fat so it goes a little deeper. But that ball has recovered 25 yards down the field there at the 40, you know? So, in my head, at the beginning of the fourth quarter, we're going to deem that we're going to do an onside kick, but we need a 20-yard, 20 <laughs> 25-yard onside kick here as opposed to one that we're trying to get it to 10, 11 yards. I was immediately trying to game this. I was immediately like, all right, if these are the rules, I'm going to try to game this thing as much as possible. You already thought about of that because, because all you assholes were doing the same thing. Yes, <laughs> that is what happened. <laughs> Yeah, no question. What we don't want is a, is a team that's, you know, trailing. We want to give them the opportunity, obviously, to recover the onside kick. But at the same time, you know, we don't want a team to declare an onside kick and then kick the ball deep. So that would be an unsportsmanlike. So you have a 25-yard area to work with. That ball's got to be touched in that area, okay. which we think is extreme, which is fair. Biggest win for kicking team is ball lands in landing zone then becomes a touchback because then the ball comes out to the 20, which is what an old touchback used to be. That is what would be the perfect outcome for the kicking team? That is what they would be looking for, yes? I think two aspects for the kicking team. Yes, yeah, one that both you've mentioned. One, hang the ball, get that ball down as close to the goal line as you can without going in the end zone, and then go cover. And then second one is you can get the ball on the ground and it rolls in to the end zone like you mentioned. Uh, the ball comes at a 20. One, one small caveat that, that, uh, you didn't mention is every ball, like old school rules, every ball is going to have to be downed in the end zone. The ball that lands in the end zone untouched has to be downed. We're going to down every ball. The reason for that is those balls that might skip into the end zone. We don't want those to be automatic touchbacks. We want to give the return team the opportunity to go in, take the ball out and, and be able to still return the ball. Where right now under the current umbrella you could you would not be able to do that. Okay. So, so every ball every ball will be down. Okay. So it sounds like we're trying to create a lot more returns and make teams want to return the ball as opposed to just taking the ball in the twenty five. And teams are not going to want to give up a thirty five yard start line if you hit an actual touchback or a forty yard if you don't make it in the landing zone. So we're going to get more returns seemingly out of this. Have you guys ran the numbers on how many more plays? and how, many, how much more action we will get from this particular kickoff? Yeah, I, the feeling, Pat, is that there'll probably be about an 80 to 85% return rate under the current proposal. So if you take the 1,970 touchbacks plus the fair catches, there were 92 fair catches last year, so now we're over 2,000 plays. So if we can get an 80% return rate, 85% return rate, we're talking about another, we're going to add another 1,600 plays yeah. to the NFL season, which you know Jeez, is great damn. for players, coaches, fans, great, great for everybody. Yeah, and also... All kickoffs are potential house calls. So it's not just like a throwaway play. All you need is, yeah. and you're trying to coach this out of people, but all you need is one one of these. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, instead of this, and then all we got house calls happening. Yeah. So the game's getting better from this. The only thing that sucks is you guys are taking fun out of the game. They're taking surprise onside kicks oh, out know. of the game. Oh, well, you're trying to kill the game, coach. You're taking surprise onside kicks. I made a living off of these. <laughs> I made. I, this was one of the things that, like, hey, why do you have Pat on your team? Well, the dipshit's not bad at surprise onside kicks. That's what people would actually say. You guys are taking it out of the game, coach. I remember doing one. Well, we, oh, we only did four, I think, my five my whole eight years. <laughs> it's a lot, though. We got four in one year. That's a record, NFL record. Comparison. I think we tied there. I kicked one of myself. Mm -hmm. and then tied. But I think we only did like five or six over eight years. Well, without that, where's the Hall of Fame nod?
Bingo. Bingo. You're, yeah. I need it. How about that? Yeah. And without your play for the Saints. Now he's taking it out. You, yeah. The most important play. Yeah. Out. Ambush Thomas Morrison. They want a super. Take down the banner down there in New Orleans. Now. You guys don't want surprise onside kicks anymore. Thomas Morrison mm. against who? Oh, give me my ring. Oh, yeah. Boy. I was, uh, you know, Peyton Manning and I. <laughs> but the surprise onside kicks is the big thing that we're losing, right? That's the big conversation piece. And then you start doing math, I guess, and you guys all realize the same thing I think everybody else did. No question. You know, I, I think one of the things you got you got to look back and and when we changed the kickoff rules in 2018 to, under the current umbrella, where the setup zone rules changed, the kickoff formation rules changed, uh, no more kickoff running start changed. All that we we essentially made it a lot harder to recover a surprise onside kick, and I think that the fans would be a little bit surprised by the, the actual the, the reality of the situation and, and how little that play has been used since the kickoff rules were changed in 2018. So, for example, this past season, there was literally two surprise outside kick attempts, and and, and, we, and the league was 0 for 2. Over the course of the last five years, there's been less than four per year. And I think that I think of the last 15 surprise outside kick attempts, we're looking at two recoveries. So we're really, you know, again, I understand. Uh, I'm, I'm in the house of the biggest surprise outside kick in the history of NFL. So believe me, I, I got it. I'm, I'm in the house of the ambush. But the ambush rules back then, the rules were different. It was a little bit easier to recover the kick. Um, the kickoff formations weren't as tightly officiated as they are now. There was a running start by the kickoff team. Uh, all those things. I mean, you have Griff Whale in there recovering your kick for the Colts. You know, Griff had the running start going. So, again, I, I, I get it. Uh, it's, it's, it's probably, you know, there's two things that I think when you look at, at this current proposal that – the things that I keep hearing the most. Number one, we're losing the surprise onside kick. Okay, so we're talking about three or four plays 